chondrites. If you are lucky enough to find a chondrite, you're holding a rock that's even older than Earth itself. They are the most common meteorites and make up the vast majority of meteorites that successfully reach the surface. They contain tiny spherical grains called chondrules that formed billions of years ago in the early solar system before the planets in our night sky even existed. These primitive rocks come in several major varieties. Some of them have relatively high iron content, which determines the meteorite's density and magnetic properties, and they are the most common type found on Earth. The carbon-rich varieties are the solar system's time capsules. They contain organic compounds, water-keeping minerals, and sometimes even the building blocks of life, amino acids. Enstatite chondrites are the rarest ones among them, and they contain minerals rarely found on our planet. Achondrites. They are igneous rocks that were once melted, either on asteroids or planets. They do not contain chondrules because the parent body was hot enough to destroy them. Although their classification system is confusing, they can generally be grouped under three main categories. Primitive types represent a transitional category between chondrites and true achondrites because their heat-driven transformation remained incomplete. Asteroid source types formed within a space body, instead of becoming a planet, remained frozen as an asteroid. Planetary achondrites are even more exotic. They are pieces of the planets or moons blasted into space by asteroid impacts, eventually falling to Earth. These rocks show that material can transfer between worlds, supporting the panspermia hypothesis, the idea that life itself might spread through space via meteorite impact. Hexahedrites. Iron meteorites are the cores of planetesimals that never got the chance to become full planets. Hexahedrites are the simplest structural class of iron meteorites, and they contain relatively low amounts of nickel. But still, when etched with acid, they reveal straight parallel lines called Neumann bands. The name hexahedrite comes from how crystals can split along cubic crystal faces, though you need specialized equipment to see this clearly. Octahedrites. Octahedrites are the most common iron meteorites, containing higher amounts of nickel and iron. Their defining feature is forming the geometric patterns that look like alien hieroglyphs, called Widmanstetten patterns. They form only through extremely slow cooling, about 1 degree Celsius per million years. Ataxites. They contain the highest nickel content among iron meteorites. Unlike others, ataxites show no regular pattern when etched. Instead, they display an irregular mixed structure. Palisites. They are the universe's jewelry. These stunning meteorites contain translucent olivine crystals embedded in a metallic iron-nickel matrix. When cut thin and backlit, they glow with golden, green, and amber hues like stained glass windows from space. A single gram of quality palisite can sell for hundreds of dollars. Mesocedarites. They are mixtures of metal and silicate formed during violent asteroid collisions. Unlike palisite's elegant crystal and metal structure, they show jumbled fragments of rock and metal mixed together like a badly stirred cake batter. The collision had to be violent enough to mix these materials, but not so energetic that everything vaporized. Tektites. Tektites are not meteorites. They're actually earth rocks melted and launched into space by meteorite impacts and then fall back to earth. When a large meteorite strikes, the extreme pressure blasts surface rocks skyward. Then, the molten droplets cool into glass as they arc through the atmosphere before landing hundreds of miles away. They have different subtypes based on both their geometric shapes and the regions where they are discovered. Australites were used as cutting tools and ceremonial objects by Aboriginal Australians long before scientists understood their origin. Moldavites have been used in jewelry since the Stone Age. People have found Moldavite arrowheads and amulets in archaeological sites across Europe. Libyan Desert Glass. It is mysterious yellow-green impact glass found scattered across the Egyptian-Libyan border region. This nearly pure silica glass formed about 29 million years ago, suggesting the desert sand heated to extreme temperatures. Ancient Egyptians prized this material, and King Tutankhamun's burial included a scarab carved from Libyan desert glass. Impact breccias. 
They form when meteorite strikes shatter bedrock, mixing fragments into a chaotic mass that partially melts and then resolidifies. These rocks are found within and around impact craters. Some impact breccias contain actual meteorite fragments mixed with terrestrial rock, creating true mixed compositions. Meteorite Impact Diamonds When meteorites slam into Earth at high speeds, the extreme pressures can transform carbon into diamonds instantly. These differ from geological diamonds formed slowly in Earth's mantle. They're smaller and often imperfect, but created in seconds rather than millions of years. Micrometeorites Every day, approximately 100 tons of micrometeorites rain down on Earth, tiny space particles smaller than grains of sand. These cosmic dust particles survive atmospheric entry because their small size prevents them from heating enough to vaporize completely. You can even collect micrometeorites yourself using magnets on rooftops or by filtering sediments. Under a microscope, they show spherical shapes created by surface tension as they partially melted during atmospheric entry. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.